Hello and welcome to Lovely English Stories. This story is written for upper intermediate English learners. You can download the PDF transcript of this and other stories on our new Patreon page. Ready? Let's get started. B2 English Story Mullington Market Wednesday is a special day in our small town, Mullington. Why? Well, it's market day. The midweek market day in Mullington has existed for hundreds of years. I hope it'll be a tradition that will exist for many more years to come. The market attracts people from miles around. At special times of the year like Christmas, Halloween or during the summer holidays, we have market themes which attract thousands of tourists from across the country. The market really is our bread and butter. I'm not sure what we would do without it. The town would be a ghost town. Mullington has a big market square and every Wednesday it is packed full of stalls and customers. On the days when there aren't markets, sometimes singers, performers and artists come to the square to share their talents. Once a month, the square also houses a portable cinema. It's a really social place and the hub of the town. Surrounding the square are lots of lovely boutiques, delis, shops and cafes. Off the square are several small alleyways and streets. These are all filled with pubs, shops and bars. The town is only small, but we have everything you could desire. We are particularly proud of all our independent retailers. There aren't that many chain shops in our town, so everything is very individual and special. Wednesday's markets are important for these retailers as the influx of people brings extra trade to their shops. During the Christmas period, the shop owners often open late on market days to make the most of it. People burst out onto the streets. They drink mulled wine as they laugh and joke together. It's a lovely atmosphere. But for me, Wednesday is the best day, no matter what time of the year it is. I love the market. I have lived in the town since I was little and have always had an affinity with it. As a child, I loved the sweet stalls and the handmade toys. As an adult, I adore the handcrafted home decorations and the home-baked goods. There really is something for everyone. A couple of years ago, I was made redundant from my job. I knew I needed a change, and so I applied for a job at the local council as the market manager. As you can probably guess, I was successful in the role, and I've loved every minute of it. Mullington's town square holds in excess of 50 stalls. That's quite a lot for a relatively small space. The stalls differ in what they offer. I try to manage it so we have a broad selection and there isn't too much duplication. After all, people like and want variety. We have a few fruit and veg stalls as each of the stalls represent different farms in the local area. We also have a local honey stand, a stall that sells herbs and spices, arts and crafts stalls, homemade cakes and buns, animal food and treats, a fishmonger, a butcher, a coffee cart, a burger stand, a haberdashery, 
garden ornaments and plants, children's clothes, handmade t-shirts, various different types of jewellery, a florist, an aromatherapy and skincare stall, and more. Visitors to the market spend hours looking around the stalls and sampling their offers. Most of our stallholders take payment by card now, as well as cash, so they are opening up their customer base to the younger generation, who often pay with their phones or by card. Many people don't really carry cash in the UK anymore. With each new year, we are noticing that our visitors are starting to travel from far and wide to buy from our stalls. We've even won some competitions for being the best small town market. One of the things that helps with the success of the market is that transport to and from the town is particularly good. We have a train station which connects to lots of local villages and bigger towns, good bus routes around the town, and we have a huge free car park for customers who would rather drive or who don't have access to public transport in their area. We have noticed that when we have our bigger Christmas markets, which extend out from the square to the local streets, that some coach companies offer trips to the town. It really is quite a novelty. At the moment, I am busy organising the Christmas festivities. It might seem a little premature, but I'd like to be prepared. The stallholders need to apply for a spot on the market by the end of October. Then we assess their applications and try to choose a variety of different stalls. Sometimes we can't say yes to everyone, which is unfortunate, but I often offer them other spots across the town. The only problem is that sometimes they don't quite have the footfall that the market has. If I can't place someone one year, I always give priority to them the next year. I can imagine working at the market for many more years. It brings me immense joy to know I am helping people make a living and also giving our visitors an enjoyable experience. Don't get me wrong, sometimes it can be stressful, especially if the weather is bad or people complain about the traffic or if stallholders don't turn up. But in general, it is a wonderful job and I couldn't imagine doing anything else. I have spoken to other market town leaders that have been struggling to keep their town centres relevant and I keep telling them that they must open up their markets again. The joy and satisfaction people get from purchasing handmade or home-baked goods can't be beaten. My aims and hopes for the future of the Mullington Market are to extend what we offer and to open on additional days of the week. For now, I will focus on extra days around the festive period and I will continue to make our midweek market the best in the area. Do you like shopping at markets? If so, what's your favourite sort of stall or favourite thing to purchase at a market? Tell us in the comments below. We hope you enjoyed this lovely English story. Thank you for stopping by. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And remember, you can download the PDF transcript of this and other stories as an all-access Patreon on our new Patreon page. See you soon!